you think I would be considered loud? Like how I speak on a regular basis, not as an entertainer, a personality, whatever. Um. Yes. No. I'm not loud. No. I'm not loud. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you loud. Y'all see loud. Like, if y'all chilling with Sierra, she has conversations. She laughs loud. She talks what? loud. She tells stories loud. I don't believe you. Hey. I don't believe you. Hey. I am, I'm a soft speaker. Just with a lot of sass. I think my, my hand movements are louder than <laughs> Your hand movements are loud? <laughs> Good job. It's the Demoshats React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, C? Today we're back with another American reaction. Super excited about this video. If you're new to us and, and we new to you, make sure you swirl down, hit, hit that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 200k. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Emily in Paris is clearly a mix between Sex and the City and The Devil Wears Prada, meaning oh a mean boss, lots of designer clothes, and appropriate for both the weather and the pavement in Paris <laughs> affairs and unlikely situations. Don't get me wrong, both of these shows are very good entertainment, wildly successful, no question. But Emily in Paris is happening in, in, in my country now, so we need to do a bit of myth busting. First, wanting to work in France without learning the language. I'd say bold. Oh. <laughs> so at the beginning of the first episode, first season, Emily arrives in Paris, goes to her new workplace, meets her boss. Well, that's very unfortunate. Excuse me? That you don't speak French. It's a problem. Well, I'm going to mm -hmm. take a class, but je parle un peu français already. English speakers tend to assume that the rest of the world speaks English, mm -hmm. which is partly true because most countries do teach English in schools, but not everyone feels comfortable speaking that language. And if you're just assuming that people have to speak your language, it can come across as disrespectful in France. On top of that, you are missing out on the culture and everything, which matters so much to us. That's why we take it personally. I say we, like people in general. Um, we are very proud of our culture, our history, our food and gastronomy. And you want to speak the language so that you get the finesse of our culture, or so we think. So if you're a tourist in France, I highly recommend that you ask first to the person you're speaking to if they speak English, <laughs> oh, without assuming sure that they English. do, Doesn't and well. starting to just chat away. Also, just learn the basic words. Bonjour, au revoir, s'il vous plaît, merci, excusez-moi. French people will always appreciate the effort. Okay. I, I thought I would catch on the French pretty simple, yes, right? Yes, definitely. Because Louisiana was, you know, a French territory. It's like when twice. you hear and you kind of like, it clicks, you know? It's mm -hmm. like, mm, I know what that said. But yeah. I ain't know my reply to it. And we know some sayings, you know? Mm -hmm. So all I'm going to be saying is, laissez les bon temps rouler. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> 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 so on, you gotta hit that. You gotta hit that. Come on, one more time. You gotta hit that. Oh football. no, no. <laughs> you say, come on. Come on. Yeah. No, nah, you said that. A accent. lot of the things we say has French connotations. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So yeah. My mom would call me in French. Yeah. So I, and I knew to go whenever mm -hmm. I heard that one turn come on. I would come running. So yeah, and it, it didn't help that we had occasions too. Mm, so. Yeah. <laughs> You want to tell them what you say one more time? Laissez les bon temps rouler. Laissez les bon. Okay. Tout pour le. Okay. Come you, on. You get that, that okay, <laughs> you know, in your throat. <laughs> and try to improve your French as well. Then Café de Flore in the Saint-Germain district, which is the literature, culture, and university district oh, of Paris. Oh, that's the like Café de Flore. So Emily's table neighbor turns out to be a philosophy professor, talks about Simone de Beauvoir, Jean-Paul Sartre, etc. Um, that's very famous. I'm surprised that they did not mention that Karl Lagerfeld used to work there because it's a show about fashion and uh, he's very famous for that. He sketched in that cafe for years. It contributed to make it famous actually. Mm. And then 
I saw the prices on the menu behind them. And I thought, what? What? So I checked the prices online. They charge 740 euros for a cappuccino. Hello? Uh, Hello? Uh, Hello? Uh, that that's like that's stealing. Never pay that much for a coffee, not even in Paris, please. <laughs> Ridiculous. Then I checked the other side of the street, Les Deux Magots, the other cafe that they're mentioning. They charge eight euros even more. for a cappuccino. Sure. That's like Copenhagen level under my standards. <laughs> and yeah, salaries in Denmark are a bit higher than in France. <laughs> please right. don't pay that much for a coffee in Paris, ever. Then we have the Parisian snob. New boyfriend Thomas despises and avoids regular conversations and wants to talk about philosophy and higher things all the time. Yeah, I agree. So dull talking about wine. It's like a conversation about the weather. Far more interesting to drink it. No? <laughs> it's exaggerated, of course, but it touches upon something that does exist and that we call le snob parisien. Parisian as opposed to province. Not Provence, not the same thing. Provence means basically the rest of the country, everything that is not Paris. Snobs, Got it. real Parisians, as people from outside call them, are usually born, raised in Paris, still live there, have never lived anywhere else, and they can come across as arrogant and disdainful, mm. even towards other French people who were not born in Paris, but somewhere else in the country, like me. I lived in Paris. Mm. We do that in Louisiana. Really? With New Orleans. What do we do? Everybody believe that everybody who say they from Lu uh, Louisiana is from New Orleans. And I remember as a child growing up, like when I moved from New Orleans. Yeah. People were fascinated with New Orleans. They were. We, hey, we can't even be in Texas without them saying we're from New Orleans. Yeah. It's like, where uh, you from? Yeah. Louisiana. <laughs> oh, y'all from New Orleans? Yeah. That's all. It, it's the popular place, just like for many people. Or they'd be like, where y'all from? Say we're from the boot, Louisiana. Man, I always wanted to go to New Orleans. Right. Like, that's, that's the thing. They don't care on, about Lafayette. Really? They don't think they don't, about all that other stuff. They don't care about Shreveport. They don't care about all that. They'd be like, oh, I heard that. Yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been around there. It's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Right. You, say you, you know, did. this person that I know in you New Orleans. Um, But, like, you know, Paris is one of the first places we think of when we think of Paris. 100%. Yeah, you know? 100%. So I understood that part but I'm not from Paris. Snobs are generally well-educated, intellectual, friends of the arts, why not, often affluent, and they tend to gravitate inside that social privileged bubble. I've experienced it firsthand and I can totally see how it would bother foreigners as well, because it's a very exclusive milieu. I do think that people like this exist in every affluent capital city in the world that I've seen so far. But it's true that this cliche in the show does hold true. Hmm. Then affairs in the workplace. Something you should know. Sylvie is Antoine's mistress. Oh, not a mistress. So Sylvie, who is Emily's boss, the boss of the agency, is in an affair with Antoine. Antoine is a very married Ooh, client of the agency. Very, very. And the wife sneaky, sneaky. of Antoine and Sylvie are actually even friends and, and they meet on regular occasions. Oh, wow. And everyone That's seems to find that normal. Well, let me tell you, this isn't normal. <laughs> and when the same Antoine gifts lingerie to Emily and sends that to her office and Emily finds it inappropriate, Yes, it is inappropriate. <laughs> we talk more easily and openly about relationships um, than in other countries, but but we are not like that. <laughs> in the first minute when Emily arrives in Paris and gets driven to her new apartment by a, a cab, they drive past Eiffel Tower, check. Pantheon, check. Arc de Triomphe, check, 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 check. That has all Frenchies roll their eyes. But then also, it doesn't make any sense geographically. They start in Eiffel Tower, mm. drive to the Pantheon, and mm. then come back to the Arc de Triomphe. Why do that? It's like filming a movie in New York and having the guy drive from Wall Street to the West Village via Central Park. Oh. Whew. Okay. <laughs> About speaking too loud. I can't find that scene anymore. But basically, it's at the office, Emily is speaking, and one of her colleagues goes, 
Why are you shouting? Yes, it's true that people in the US speak a lot louder than we do. Really? We do speak loud. After living in the US myself, I still don't know why. Is it because the cities are super loud? We speak loud. Well, you loud. The TV's right loud. The baby's loud. The music loud. The, the, the food is loud. It be smelling good. You think, you think I would be considered loud? Like how I speak on a regular basis, not as an entertainer, a personality, whatever. Um... Yes. No. I'm not loud. No. I'm not loud. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, you On loud. Y'all see loud. Like if y'all chilling with Sierra, she has conversations, she laughs loud, she talks loud, she tells stories loud. I don't believe you. Hey. I don't believe you. Hey. I am I'm a soft speaker. Just with a lot of sass. I think my, my hand movements are louder than <laughs> Your hand movements are loud? <laughs> yeah, all that. Because you have so many cars and then if you want that cab to stop and pick you up, you really have to make him hear you. I don't know. Uh, maybe if you're American, enlighten me. In French restaurants, for instance, the music is very subtle, quiet, and people are expected to also speak quietly whereas in restaurants in the u.s the music is super loud and if you want your direct neighbor to hear what you're saying you really have to speak mm -hmm. up i had problems with this the whole <laughs> time that i lived in new york uh, people kept asking me to speak louder and i was like i can't i'm french i don't want to yell at you next one cigarettes over food oh there you are Stop eating. Why are you eating? I'm sorry. It's just so good and I'm so hungry. We'll have a cigarette. No, 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 no. I don't know about that. It, it, Do you want to have lunch? To curve your appetite? No, I'll have a cigarette. A cigarette? You like to sit down and talk with a cigarette. Uh, you know what I'm saying? No one skips lunch. No one. Since we're here, let's talk about all the comments I got under my previous videos about French culture, like French women are thin because they don't eat, they just smoke and drink coffee all day. Where, where is that coming from? <laughs> Look, I'm French, yeah? I don't drink coffee. I don't smoke. None of my friends do. Oh, <laughs> and I certainly type. don't yeah. skip lunch or any meal. And I don't know anybody who does. That myth about French people smoking like chimney, I don't know where it comes from. I think it comes from older movies. Mm. I'm just going to look at yeah, the statistics, possibly. objectively, possibly. from the World Health Organization. American smokers would smoke 22.5 cigarettes per day versus 14.4 for French smokers. It's data from 2012, so we'll see in two years when they update the data. But like, it's not true that French people smoke so much more. As for smoking indoors, which keeps coming in this series, um, no, <laughs> it's forbidden to smoke in the workplace or in any public place by law since 2007 wow. and in bars and restaurants since 2008. Mm -hmm. So no, no. Then the pleasure of doing nothing. You know, the wonderful thing about Paris is that nobody judges you for doing nothing. I mean, it's practically an art form here. Yes. Absolutely true. <laughs> we take time to enjoy life and it doesn't mean being lazy at all. I love to sit down in a cafe with a glass of wine or a tea or whatever, alone or in company, and just appreciate the moment, unload all that stress. When was the last time that you did that? It's okay. That you took a step back and just breathed. I have to stay, I, I, I gotta keep my motion. Like, I, I'm cool with chilling, you know, doing my little standing around leaning and holding the counter up mm -hmm. but other than that i like motion i like to keep it moving but i feel like after you know the average day of working taking care of everything you need to take care of i like to just sit and think or sit and scroll social media you know especially being a person who wears a not, lot of hats it's not normalized out here I know. To do that, like, I, okay, we have people, I, I'm pretty sure everybody get that moment for themselves to just sit and do nothing. Mm -hmm. Because they say to themselves, I'm exhausted, I need this time to myself. But I hear in Paris, it's like, they can do that, and like you said, it's an art. People not going to judge you for taking <laughs> not really five hours of your day just chilling. No, I didn't say five hours. I mean, I give it a good hour. 
They look maybe like two. A good conversation to y'all is about five hours, oh, right? Oh no, no, I don't even want the conversation. With I some just tea and sit. a cigarette. I just want to say I don't want the conversation. Um, without the tea and a cigarette, was just some good tea and cereal. Have a mango. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever fits your personality. <laughs> but I just feel like it's not normalized out here for us to it's naturally not. just want to chill and. We just... all gotta go. We all gotta go. We all we all gotta go. Um, I feel like it helps me balance. My my work life balance. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. it comes with. I I think sleep is a luxury too. People need to sleep, man. Oh, I, I love need to, sleep. Uh, I love need to tap in and get that rest. It's, if you don't, it does something to your brain and your body. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. Research, show me that. Let us know mm -hmm. what your thoughts on of that. Truly, it's a happiness booster. You should try. Also, I read somewhere, not in that show, somewhere else, but I can't find the source anymore, that Americans are good at entertainment, while French people are good at leisure. Mm. I couldn't agree more. I think it's very accurate. Next point and a big one. The customer is always right. The chef tells me the steak is correct. Um, well, correct for him, but not correct for me. So she's basically arguing with the waiter about having the cook cook her meat for longer. Oh. I suggest you try it. Uh, maybe you suggest you cook it longer? Yeah, I, I, I'll take yours. No, 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 take come on. The customer is always right. Major cultural difference right there. Mm. Now here, the customer is never right. Well, oh. maybe I'll educate the chef a little bit about customer service. You think you're going to change the entire French culture by sending back a steak? Yes, in France, we do think that the customer is king, just not like in the US. In France, when you eat in a restaurant, you are a guest. As a guest, you get the good treatment. White tablecloth, napkins made in cloth, the bread, the free water, everything. You get three courses. The waiter is expected to guess what you will need before you even have to ask for it and without okay. asking you what you need. The cook is your host. It would be okay. rude to make them feel like they've made a mistake before you even try, before you even take all right, so that's just like, you know, I hire a waiter to come to the house, tell the waiter what the mm. menu is going to be today. Uh, the waiter comes in and does is he does or she does their job. Mm -hmm. Bring the food. I look at it. I'm not satisfied. I should not be the one that has to, like, basically say that, hey, you did it wrong. When their job is perfect, like, they're professional. Mm -hmm. Their job is supposed to do it the way they're supposed to do it. I'm supposed to enjoy it. So it seems that they, what I would think, is that they hire chefs who who are experts. That's, like, the, that's yes. their expertise. That's the they energy. don't just hire someone looking for a job and that's they train the them. Yes, sir. That's what mm -hmm. it seems like, which would be understood. But do you guys still ask people how they like their steak? <laughs> or that's however, a, that is a question. Yes, or however you know the chef thinks this recipe should be. That's how it comes out. Mm. You look that, like a medium rare. You look, you look like a medium done chick. Baby, I'm, I'm gonna get don't you a medium me done steak. Blood. Yeah. I'm so serious. Slide it on you. Bon appetit. I'm gonna just eat appetizers. Don't touch the steak. I, I can't. I, I would wonder when guessing, mm. you know what I'm saying? I would like for them to actually know instead mm -hmm. of thinking that they're yeah. about to get it right. Nothing wrong with the analogy that you guys have, but I would like to get approached with that way. Yeah. Like, ask the question. That's a culture shock. And that that's is. why we, we travel with Tabasco sauce in our bag. Yeah. Okay. Well, not we, but, but you know, I travel with it in it my purse for mm -hmm. us, yeah. you know, and seasoning because, yeah. you know. That way. Yeah, we wouldn't have no problems. We're going to get it right. It's <laughs> your meal. Looking at it in another way. It's the cook's job to present you perfectly cooked and seasoned meals with a beautiful presentation. It's your job to assume that the kitchen did their job right. That's exactly why the waiter and then the cook tells Emily, you should try it, you might like it. I hear that part, As it is. Yeah. I'm gonna add a bonus tip in there. Don't put salt and pepper automatically before you have <laughs> tasted your food. I don't like bland food. Assume that the cook <laughs> seasoned it the way it is meant to be eaten. It's rude if you put more okay. ingredients. It's just tough on the chef then. Okay. If we hire a chef, she or he comes to the spot and they make it a certain way. It's like, <laughs> bro, it's like, I hope Man. you got it right. I mean, that's what I hired you for. That's what I came to your restaurant for. I know that that chef back there was going to kill it. I don't want no problems in France, but uh, Negative we from the deep south. We don't need no problems. Everything got to be well seasoned. Mm -hmm. Well. If not, I'm sorry, but that Tabasco sauce and them Tony seasonings and that slap your mama seasoning going to come out. 
would have been sent just like Emily. <laughs> for real, talking about some love. <laughs> I'm going to try it after I put this on. <laughs> now, I know. I know. I was supposed to go get all this right here for this part, but I'm letting y'all know we all like bland food. Mm -mm. At nah. all. Nah, we grew so, up on the spicy. Grew so, up on the seasoned, balanced. Well seasoned. Yes, sir. Well seasoned. If you're not sneezing, if it's it not ain't grip, seasoned. There you go. Okay. You're talking right now. So when we when when the time come, okay, and we tell y'all, hey, we coming. Which restaurant should we go to? Keep that in mind. Yeah, but ain't okay. it the same as like you know, you get family, relatives, friend come to your house and you mm -hmm. offer them a plate. Okay. Yes. They are expecting for you to cook it. Correctly. Correctly the first time. Mm-hmm. How it's supposed to be cooked. And if they say, which they a lot of times people are not gonna say in the South. Especially if you're like, I don't know, it depends, it depends. But I don't think they're gonna tell you off the back whether your food is good or not. They're gonna just eat it. Maybe not. You you don't remember me. No, you're I'm right. just saying because like there'll be times where, you know, you would cook a food and like if someone it's eating it. I don't. I, I just never had that happen before. Where a person said AOD, I'm not. We're gifted with seasoning. I think. I think we did it right. That's We're why. We're gifted with seasoning. We did it right. But what would they say? Like what? Well, we have been been to people's house. Well, the food wasn't good. We've been there. But what they. Did, but they saying? don't. They're not offended when we take out oh, Tabasco sauce, though. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Or we ask. Right. So. Mm -hmm. But this is restaurants. Yeah, it's a different ballpark. Y'all gonna get on us, but guess what? We don't care. We don't like playing. I think. Food. I think so. Like when it comes to us and just anybody house, we just had a person in the kitchen. Right. Like you need anything else is in there. Like. Yeah. I think that's but how they but go. that never happens at our house. No, it don't happen. The food is always well balanced. It's like when people come in your automatically family, especially about to eat at the mm -hmm. table. You know what I'm saying? Everything is open yeah. to you. Just yeah. go get it. Right. But we cooked it right though. The first time. Right. We gifted. Like. I'm a, I'm a brag on that. I'm not a bragger, but baby, when it comes to food. Yeah, you fire. You fire. Yeah. You fire, fire. I am considered the next person in line after my grandmother for cooking in my family. So. Turn up! <laughs> I'm a toot my horn. Before toot, toot. having tasted, French cooks love foodies. Clients oh. who can just taste and immediately tell you this ingredient, you added a bit of this, a bit of that. Like they yes. love people who know and appreciate what they're eating. If you're able to do that, the cook will oh, come yeah, out of I'm the a... kitchen to salute you and have a chat. The Ooh. waiter will get you a complimentary coffee. Okay. You'll get a I'm digestive on top of that. Good. And the next time you walk in, they'll call you by your name and give you the best table. Okay. That's how it's done. So you build Awkward situations be due to translation. Merci for the shower. La douche. What? <laughs> the shower is la douche. I enjoy languages and, and <laughs> puns in other languages, I so I find that part really funny. If you speak both English and French, you'll... Just an American person hearing that as a female, I would be like, what? Okay, gotcha. Yes, let's continue. Get the nuances. <laughs> the jokes are not always good taste, but they're all pretty accurate. <laughs> Eiffel Tower charms. Yes, that was missing. I could eat your clothes. <laughs> Here again, the scene is extremely exaggerated, but yeah, it comes across as tacky. It's like wearing a giant sign on your forehead saying, I'm a tourist. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. not cool in France. That's very if good. If you want though. to blend in and or live like a local, I'd avoid that. One more. We have one more. Oh, is this it? It's on the fifth floor. This is the fourth floor. Uh I just slapped off these bags five flights. This is the fifth floor. <sighs> Obviously, the ground mm. floor is zero. Oh, yeah. Da. Yeah. <laughs> this is called second degree. In French, the context and the tone of what people are saying is essential to understand if they're being serious, ironic, or mm. plainly kidding. And this tonality thing, there is a lot between cultures. In the US, people usually say what they mean. In French, there is more of a context to understand. You need to be able to read between the lines. In Japan, you need to even understand what has not been said at all. <laughs> like it's another level of complexity in terms of understanding nuances. There is a full scope um, of, of communication differences, sources of miscommunication and, and misunderstandings. If you're interested in this 
there is a great book called The Culture Map oh, that analyzes and maps countries on an axis based on how much context you need to understand the language. It's super interesting. So yeah, if you're American and you move to France, especially Paris, you need to get used to that kind of gymnastics. That's it for the little roundup. Thumbs up. This was a fun video. Yeah, this was fun. This I was a fun that. video. It's, yeah. it's crazy. We went through our whole little rant about the seasonings. And then she said afterwards, the chef would like us. So I think we're going to get us some good seats in the, uh, in the restaurant. But I feel like just the chef alone having the title chef, he shouldn't get it wrong. Right. Right. Yeah, I, and I know that. Like, if I know I'm about to order a steak, I'm expecting the that question to pop out. Do you want it done, well done, or mm -hmm. not? You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. the only thing. Other than that, like, when you eyeball your menu, you can tell what is going to, you know, complement your taste buds. Mm -hmm. And then you got chef in the kitchen exactly. like that. So it's going to, he's going to hit home exactly. run. Exactly. Yeah. I think we'll be good. Shout out to all the chefs, man. That's going to be killing it. a journey. Yeah, big So, facts. this was a cool video. We hope you guys enjoyed it with us. Like this video, subscribe. Turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you would like to support the channel that way. As well as our reaction request form is in our description, description box, box below. below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.